Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're doing okay. Going to read through the full details here. There's a link in the description. It is quite lengthy, so you might prefer to read through that yourself. Um, going to give an extreme trigger warning. This woman here that you see in front of you, her name is Stacy Shushot, and uh, she has pleaded guilty to beating up and murdering her 17-month-old son, um, who was known as Sean Buttery Jr. And the article does fairly quickly go into quite a bit of detail in regards to the suffering that the young child faced, so an extreme trigger warning. I'm going to read through the full details. A Kentucky mother has admitted to beating her 17-month-old son to death in 2019. Stacy Shushart last week formally pleaded guilty to one count of murder in the death of her toddler son, Sean Buttery Jr. Shushart, who initially entered a plea of not guilty in the case, is currently scheduled to appear in Campbell County Circuit Court on March the 29th, 2022, in order to be sentenced. So she, the mother initially pleaded not guilty, however, she has changed that to a formal guilty plea uh, in regards to one count of murder in the death of her toddler son, 17-month-old Sean Buttery Jr. So as I say, the following is going to go into quite a bit of details. Um, so the trigger warning comes into effect at this point. Shushart, the mother, on August the 16th, 2019, called 911 and told an, em an emergency dispatcher that she was at home with Sean and his three-year-old brother when Sean hit his head on the microwave and stopped breathing. Officers with the Dayton Police Department and Emergency Medical Services personnel responded to the home. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders reportedly found an unresponsive Sean in critical condition. Authorities reportedly noted in the affidavit that Sean, the 17-month-old son, had sustained a collection of injuries beyond bumping his head on the microwave. Emergency medical services transported the 17-month-old to the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, where doctors attempted to resuscitate the 17-month-old. He was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at the facility. The Hamilton County Coroner's Office performed an autopsy and reportedly determined that Sean died due to homicidal violence. The child had suffered a significant traumatic injury, including severe bruises to several areas of his head and eyes and swelling of the brain, swelling of the brain consistent with repeated blunt force trauma. The severity of the injuries was deemed consistent with what the coroner said she would expect from a serious car injury, car accident. Sean, the 17-month-old boy, also reportedly sustained at least four fractures, fractures to his pelvis, indicating that someone had stomped on him while he was on the floor, causing internal bleeding and completely detaching his bladder from his skeletal system. Additionally, one of the one of the child's arms was broken, likely due to it being grabbed and twisted. The coroner's report emphasized that any collision Sean may have had with the microwave played no role in his death, outright stating that the toddler was beaten to death. A neighbour who wished to remain anonymous has said that he spoke with the mother at least twice in the weeks following the boy's death. The person, the neighbour, described the mother as being emotionless and nonchalant when discussing her son's brutal death. Here's a quote from the neighbour. If she's guilty, they should throw away the key. Well, I'll just interject there. She's pleaded guilty. She's pleaded guilty, and I agree with the neighbour. Um, yeah, they should throw away the key. Uh, they should enact the death penalty if that's available. I don't think it is. 
It's going to tell us a little bit about the recommendation, recommended sentence in a, in a little minute. So we'll just carry on for now. The boy's father had reportedly left for work early on the morning Sean sustained his fatal injuries. He had told police that both boys were not injured the previous night when he went to sleep. Making matters even worse, while the mother was Sean's biological mother, the state had obtained a court order removing Sean and his older brother from her home and placing them in the care of her sister. Despite the court order, prosecutors reportedly said there was evidence the children had been living with the mother illegally for at least a month prior to Sean's grisly death. So apparently, apparently, I mean, I shouldn't say apparently, it, it's a fact uh, that uh, the mother should not have been the guardian of the children, both children, at this point in time. Uh, they had been removed from her guardianship, um, yet they were living with her illegally for at least a month. The mother was arrested on November the 18th, 2019, on one count of first-degree manslaughter, but that charge was later dismissed and upgraded to murder charges. Prosecutors with the Campbell County Commonwealth's Attorney Office have reportedly filed documents recommending that the court sentence Shu Shot to 35 years in prison with an, with an opportunity for parole after serving 20 years. Okay, and that's really the end of the article there. It lets us know that uh, this evil scumbag that's pleaded guilty to murdering her 17-month-old son, um, she's currently in jail. Uh, she has been in jail, Campbell County Jail, since she was arrested. Um, and it's telling us, the article's telling us that the prosecutors, in their so-called wisdom, think that it's perfectly fine if she's released after 20 years. No problems. Oh, you killed your 17-month-old child? Oh, not a problem. I'm being facetious, and apologies if that offends anybody. I'm just angry at such a lackluster sentencing. 20 years. Well, I mean, the recommendation uh, for the sentencing is 35 years, but allowing for parole at 20 years. I mean, that's not good enough. That's not long enough. She took the life of her own child, 17-month-old son, and she did so apparently in such an absolutely horrific way. Trigger warning. Severe bruising to several areas of the boy's head and eyes. Swelling of the brain consistent with repeated blunt force trauma. The severity of the injury is consistent with a serious car accident. Four fractures to his pelvis, indicating, and this is where I cringe. This is where I get truly disgusted, and I can't contemplate it on the subject for more than a fleeting moment. Indicating that someone had stomped on him. Fucking hell, I stomped on a child, a 17-month-old toddler, her own son. I mean, the, the her, her own son part is kind of irrelevant, frankly. Just stomping on a child is awful. Stomping on a toddler even more so. I mean, obviously, serious fucking damage is going to happen. Causing internal bleeding and completely detaching his bladder from his skeletal system. I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens, you know, as the article says, as as the coroners have said. The kind of thing that would happen in a serious car accident or during war. And this fucking lunatic scumbag did this willingly, knowingly to her own son. To a 17 month old boy. What a fucking evil C word. I mean, how can the prosecutors say, oh yeah, no worries, let her out in 20 years, should be fine. How can they say that? There's something wrong with your system in Kentucky. You need to strengthen up your laws. You need to strengthen up your sentencing protocols. 20 years. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs>